Hey everybody, uh, Dr. Rick once again, another segment of Riding with Rick. I uh, hope everybody's having a great day. Uh, as for me, business as usual, pushing to make things happen. Look, you know the routine. If you believe in the work we do at the Addison Project, show your love, show your support, and donate. If you like what you see or hear on this channel, click the like button, click the share button, and subscribe. Uh, here's one uh, again. Won't be long. You know, on my way to the spot uh, to meet up with uh, a couple of people, uh, but uh, this needs to be said. Oh, I almost forgot. Before I do, this Friday uh, is a special day. Um, it is the release of my 27th book, which makes what makes this book special is it's the sequel to my first book, which is The Invisible Father, Reversing the Curse of a Fatherless Generation. The title of this book is The Invisible Father Legacy. And it is connected in many ways, but it expands and goes deeper and explores the many areas of intersectionality and connectivity of absentee fatherhood and the entire breakdown of the community, uh, the uh, all the way to uh, illness, mental illness, adverse childhood, ex uh, uh, ex uh, adverse childhood experiences, uh, other epigenetic influences, but also uh, economic disparities, uh, academic and educational disparities, and this whole uh, private to pr uh, private prison, industrial complex thing, school to prison pipeline, all of this stuff and how it's connected, and just shows the immense importance of having. Uh, a functional, well-developed man leading the home, leading the community, and on down the line. Um, this this book is officially released this Friday, but you can pre-order it by looking at the link in the description box. Get it at a discounted introductory price and free shipping and handling up until Thursday night before the release on Friday morning. So, uh, if you are follower of my work, fan of my writing, uh, you want to delve into the importance of absentee fatherhood and the impact it has had on the black community, hey, look, you don't want to miss this. Uh, this book is so well put together that you're going to get two books in one. You'll know uh, when you finish, you'll have the essence of the first book and the expansion of the second book all in one book. It's it, uh, I love what I was able to do with it. Uh, I am hoping that it inspires and encourages, it challenges us to get out and do something because this is such an important issue and it's more than just uh, a springboard to discontent and dissension amongst ourselves. It is one of the primary causalities of this whole thing we're dealing with. If we can manage this, if we can deal with it, oh, the sky is the limit. And let's move on into uh, one of the fallouts of this is something I'm going to talk to you about now um, on a once removed, but it definitely is a part of this and it's addressed in depth in this book. But uh, one of the things that I, I've told you for years is that 20 years ago, uh, somewhere a little over 20 years ago, I'm, I'm dealing with clients and they're coming to me and I'm noticing this developing phenomenon basically that a good portion probably at the time I swear 80% of the black females who were coming to me trying to hash out issues ultimately at some point revealed that they had been sexually abused as children that they had been uh, mishandled mistreated sexually in some form or another while they were still minors. In many instances, by the very people who should have been protecting them. Uh, and in, in many instances, brothers and even sisters were violating them. Uh, and this isn't to minimize or marginalize the impact of incest and childhood sexual abuse for black males. This isn't what this is about because they are involved in this as well. It's just that this is how it started for me. I'm like, okay, either 
every black woman who has ever been molested has found me or oh, there's a problem here. So I began to contact other professionals. I began to look into some some uh, existing data, which it wasn't a lot at the time, and determined that there's a real issue. This isn't some phenomenon. It's a problem. It's a phenomenon in the sense that it exists, but it's not unique to me or exclusive to people that I'm dealing with. So I began to look into it, and I began to confront it. I began to press for more research to be done. I've done some of my own studies and research and I began to write on it. I began to uh, lecture and teach on it and you'll see it all through my work. You'll see it in, in my articles. You'll see it in my books. You'll see it in my lectures. You'll see it in videos. I've been very, very vocal about the need to deal with this. There's a part and an element of this that really is problematic to me and I've talked about it a great deal and that is the tendency for the family to ostracize and villainize the victim. Moreover, to demand that the victim allow the perpetrator and the abuser to be a part of their lives. This is where I have to be very vocal and I have to be very staunch in my position. I have to be very clear in this. Stop forcing people to maintain and sustain relationships with people who abuse them. Not just as children, but uh, but definitely as children. Um, stop believing, if you are a victim, that you owe someone based on lineage and bloodline to be a part of your life when they have been detrimental to your very existence. There seems to be this idea that I owe someone something because I was born into something. I believe family has to be like anything else. It has to be nurtured. It has to be cultivated. It has to be sustained. And when the code is broken, when there's a violation, there must be a consequence. And sometimes consequence is excommunication. Consequence is dismissing this person permanently from your life. Sometimes consequence says that I'll hold a place for you if you can deal with who you are and what you've done and show me that you've changed and that you can be a positive force in my life, but I don't even owe you that. You all, you, you get one time to violate me in any way. I'm not talking about just sexually. I'm talking about in any way. And at that moment, I have the right to sit up and say, you know what? I'm done. I'm not dealing with you anymore. I, 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 I don't owe you to be your punching bag. I don't owe you to be the... Uh, point or target of expression of your own pain and suffering. I, I don't owe that to you. And I think that we have got to get a fix on this. We're literally sitting up and further traumatizing and damaging our offspring, our progeny, our family, our bloodline, by insisting that they have continued relationships with people who have devastated them and in many instances playing guilt trips on them, manipulation and all types of things trying to force them into being with someone, around someone uh, and connected to someone who represents probably the most darkest time and moment in their lives and not understanding the far reaching psychological, spiritual, emotional, uh, and physiological consequences. This thing pays out in so many different ways, health outcomes, behavioral outcomes, economic outcomes, and so many other ways. I've, I've, I've broken this out, but we have definitely got to put a stop to that. I am calling right now. Stop it. 
if you are a person that is guilting someone into being in a relationship with someone who has abused them. And again, we, t we, st we starting out talking about sexual abuse and we're starting out talking about children and minors. That's where it starts. First and foremost, protect the child that was abused. I don't care how old they are now, protect the child that was abused because that child still is in there somewhere, especially if they haven't been treated adequately for the trauma. That child, protect that child. Protect that person. Protect their right. Protect their personal sovereignty and the sovereign right within oneself to determine who they want to give their time, attention, love, and respect to. Stop trying to force people to be loyal to something that was never loyal to them. And then we can move even into adult times. Stop forcing, trying to force people to be in relationships to people who hurt them. And I'm, now I'm talking about these relationships with people who broke their hearts, people who mishandled their love, people who sit up and have done them dirty. Stop think, making them think like it's something wrong with them because they don't want to deal with that person anymore. Nobody owes anybody uh, a space in their life to harm them. And we've got to do a better job of defending and protect the, protecting the hurt. So I'm not going to go any deeper than that. Than that. Look, we've got to do better. Again, uh, if you want to visit this topic, it's definitely in The Invisible Father Legacy, which is the sequel to The Invisible Father Reversing the Curse of a Fatherless Generation. Uh, that book comes out Friday, but you can pre-order it at a discounted price and free shipping and handling. Now it's in the uh, description box. But also, whether you get the book or not, show some love, show some support, because the work we need to do in the community, evidenced by things like what we just discussed, has to be dealt with. We need to deal with that, and we need to deal with it decisively. And we need to understand the depth of the problem. Uh, we, we are way too casual with devastating realities that uh, are pervasive in our community. And it's time out for that. And we're going to have to do a better job of dealing with it. But on that note, I'm gonna get off of here, uh, try to get my head together, get, get, get a little unwind. It's been wound tight. Got a lot going on, obviously. But again, don't forget to show some love, show support. Don't forget to get the book. But pay attention and share this. If you know somebody that's dealing with something like this, share it with them. Uh, if you need support in this area, reach out. Uh, but we've got to do something different. This is still a very pervasive and real situation in our community. It is the elephant in the room that we consistently ignore. Um, and it's time that we deal with it wholeheartedly and decisively. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.